belated Hindenburg on her last flight sails over New York. These pictures made from a Pathé news plane less than four hours before the tragedy show the world's largest airship heading for Lakehurst, New Jersey. Over Newark's famous auto skyway, the airship was hailed by thousands who little dreamed it was their final glimpse of the Hindenburg. Inside the silver envelope are 16 separate gas bags, each filled with hydrogen, a highly inflammable gas. From the ground, you can see the forward control cabin from which the ship is operated. The windows along the side indicate the location of the passengers' quarters, in which many were carried to a flaming death. Approaching Lakehurst, the Hindenburg appeared a conquering giant of the skies, but she proved a puny plaything in the mighty grip of fate. It almost seemed as if fate had set the stage for the horrible tragedy. A graceful craft sailing serenely to her doom. For three hours, the dirigible circled the landing field at Lakehurst, New Jersey, dumping more water ballast than ever before in vain efforts to level off. Again, she dumps ballast and a nervous tension grips those who are watching, for this is something unusual. There goes more ballast, but the tale is settling in spite of all that has been dumped. A grim note of impending tragedy. Finally, the landing lines are dropped. These scenes were filmed by Pathé News cameraman William Deak, and you are about to see the pictures he got when the ship exploded. Those aboard leaping for life from a flaming inferno, the actual crash of the Hindenburg, an airship destroyed in less than half a minute. Rushing to the rescue, the heroes of the tragedy dash in, heedless of danger to help the injured to safety, while others, beyond help, perish in the flames. aftermath reveals the extent of the disaster, an inferno which became a flaming tomb, a twisted mass of the scorched skeleton of what was once a mighty airship. Hindenburg has gone. She represented man's latest attempt to conquer the Atlantic by air. Her tragedy will not halt the march of progress. From her ashes will arise the knowledge, from her fate the lesson that will lead to a greater and a better means of mastering the air. If so, her dead will not have died in vain.
German Zeppelin Hindenburg, Queen of the Skies, seen here from a universal newsreel camera plane as it sped over New York to its tragic end at Lakehurst, New Jersey, now lies at the Naval Air Station a twisted mass of metal. Shortly after these pictures were taken, showing the great Skyliner saluting the millions watching it from below on its first trip of the season, the huge craft exploded while docking and blazed to a fiery end, taking the lives of almost half its 99 passengers and crew. Hours late on its trip from Hamburg because of headwind, the Zeppelin had to ride out a thunderstorm along the Jersey coast before heading for the air station and nosing its way to the mooring mast. The wind is bad and the docking is a ticklish one, but it's all a thrill for the crowd of happy passengers eager to land after their transoceanic trip. Slowly the big ship warps in and the ground crews rush for the mooring line. In another 10 minutes or so, the great aircraft would have been snugly docked. But as the passengers crowded the windows to watch, a roar and a burst of flame near the big tail fins turned the ship into a flaming inferno. among them fell or jumped and were dragged to safety before the fiery furnace took their lives. Heroic work by Navy and Army men risking their lives around the white hot skeleton snatched more than one dazed and half-burned passenger from the blazing wreckage. But for the most of those trapped in the incandescent tangle, there was no hope. It's the greatest of miracles that anyone came out of the disaster alive. Seven million cubic feet of inflammable hydrogen gas blazed up in less than a minute. The hundreds of tons of fuel oil burns for an hour or more with its dense black smoke making a pall over the tragic scene. In all the history of air disasters, this is the worst, the most terrible. Hailed as the luxury liner of the air, the Hindenburg's horrible end has shocked the entire world. The pride of the skies reaches its journey's end. A twisted, tangled mass of seared girders and bits of blackened fabric are all that remains of the proud luxury airliner Hindenburg that lies at the Lakehurst Naval Station. The death list is now 35, with 10, including Captain Proust, still on the critical list. With the next morning's first light, a naval inspection board headed by Captain Haynes inspects the wreckage, as others search the still smoking ruins for a possible clue that might yield a key to the mysterious disaster. The remains of the Hindenburg will not be moved until the arrival of Germany's expert, Dr. Hugo Eckener, who heads a commission that will conduct an investigation simultaneously with the Department of Commerce. German Ambassador Hans Luther was the first Reich observer to arrive, visiting the injured at the hospital in nearby Lakewood, but refusing to comment on anything connected with the disaster. As soon as is possible, the injured who can be moved are carried to ambulances for transfer to New York, 60 miles away so as to receive everything that medical science can offer. Swathed in bandages, they may be more than thankful for their miraculous escape from the blazing inferno of the Hindenburg. <laughs> Members of the crew not seriously injured were housed in the officer's mess at the naval station. 13-year-old Werner Franz, a cabin boy, is the youngest survivor who will appear before the Department of Commerce Investigation Board that calls Commander Rosendahl, head of the naval station, as first witness. But experts believe the exact cause of the greatest of air disasters will never be known. Over the Hindenburg will loom a question mark that can never be forgotten. <laughs> 